I'm a recovering addict, an alcoholic. Approximately five years and three months clean. The first occasion for me that I was ex exposed to drugs was high school. I took all those DARE programs uh, when I was in elementary school, stay away from drugs. You know, I was a little kid, I would never do any of those things. I can't tell you if it was curiosity, maybe possibly it was, or possibly when growing up, all through elementary school, I was a little tiny chubby kid. You know, I got made fun of, I had very bad insecurities about myself, you know, and I was always seeming looking for an escape route. You know, first there's video games, my fantasy land, movies, whatever get me out of what I was thinking, or because I didn't like who I was. I didn't like my life, even though I had a great family. I didn't like who I was. And when I smoked pot for the first time, it seemed all those anxieties, all that stresses, all those emotions I always built up since I was an early kid faded away. Two weeks after I smoked, my first time, I uh, got drunk for the first time, and I loved it. I didn't have to be me. Whoever I was, I didn't have to be me. I didn't have to be that chubby kid who everyone made fun of. It was within a year I was doing a lot of drugs. I started to smoke cigarettes, because that was a cool thing. Um, then they introduced me to cocaine. I didn't smoke pot that much anymore. I was, I was a cokehead. I loved cocaine. At the cocaine, I was doing psychedelics, experimenting. Psychedelics, mushrooms, acid. It's a very weird thing with me and heroin because today, most of you experiment with pills and that's how they get hooked on heroin. And I didn't do any pills until after heroin. That beat any other drug I ever did in my life. That made me become something that I always wanted to be. I became a different person. My only goal wasn't to go to college. It wasn't to start a family. It wasn't to get a job. It was to get drugs and do them by any means necessary. My automatic thought when I woke up every morning was heroin. How was I going to get heroin? Addicts in active addiction are very creative. We will get money even if there's no possibility of getting it. We will get it by any means necessary. I was desperate for money. That's when I began selling things. I sold everything in my room, stole money from my grandparents. I stole about $30,000 from my mother. I can't imagine living that all over again. I wouldn't want to. I'd rather be, I honestly, to go back where I was, I would rather die. Because the way I was living, wasn't living at all. With heroin, it changed me into something. It changed me into something I did not want to be. You know, like people, normal people, we have conscience, we know what's right and wrong. You know, we have that voice in our heads, don't, don't do this, don't do that. But in active addiction, you don't have that. You don't have that voice saying, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this. Oh, you could go to jail for this. That's out the window. I did not have a conscience. Talk to my mom. She looks at me sometimes and she tears up. And I'm like, why, mom? And she's like, I can't believe you, you did, you, you're here. Because I should have been dead. I was up to doing a seven bags a day habit, at least, if not more. I remember I actually robbed somebody of heroin um, and I brought back to my house. I was all alone in my basement and I shut up two bags and I remember I got really tired and I decided just to lay on my floor. That's the last memory I have. I woke up in the hospital. For some reason my mom decided to come down that second. She found me passed out, not breathing blue on the floor. A normal person think you go through something like that, that would stop you. It doesn't. The sickening part of this disease, you know, you're in the hospital, you just came out of an old day, and I remember that I put a bundle of heroin in my pocket. And that was my first thought. Now why I was there, I put my hands in my pocket to see if my heroin was there, and it wasn't. 
I didn't care if I OD'd. Maybe I want to die. There was a time when my mom actually caught me with a needle in my arm in the bathroom. My mom comes in, rushing into the door, and I remember I pushed her off on the floor. And I screamed at her, get away. And my mom is a small woman. And I grabbed her by the edge of her neck and she's still on the floor and I threw her out of the bathroom and I locked the door to finish my drugs. And my mother comes out, uh, comes, kicks the bathroom door in and she has the scissors in her hand. She did, and she's crying. And I already injected whatever I was doing heroin. And uh, my mother's face, and she had scissors, and she handed me the scissors. And she said, you're dying, you're killing yourself. Why do it like this? Just do me the favor. Just end it for me now. I was diagnosed with a brain tumor due to cocaine use, age 16, which I still have today. And it's inoperable. You think that alone, you know, it's your health. It didn't face me. I would go into radiation. They had to put like a mask on my face with nosebleeds because I wouldn't stop using cocaine. A lot of profession, uh, professionals say people have to reach their bottom. And I believe the goal of the professional is to raise that bottom for the individual so we don't have to eventually hit rock bottom. And unfortunately for me, because I had no help, I had no guidance, I had to reach my bottom. I woke up one morning, you know, the craving, sickness, and not having heroin, not having drugs. And like I said, I'm a manic thought. Like, how am I gonna get my drugs? I couldn't rob stores anymore. All the stores knew who I was. So I managed to con my grandmother at uh, $20, and I got a ride to Deer Park. And I walked to my dealer's house and I got one bag of heroin and I did it right then and there. You know, with a drug addict, if you have drugs in your head, they're not going to wait for it. You're, just, you're going to do them. After I got high, I started walking back to, towards my house about six miles away. And I realized in my head, um, what about later on tonight? I'm going to be sick tonight. I need more drugs. I try to think of all the smart ways to gain money try to rob a store. I put the hoodie over my face and there was a 14, around 15 year old kid working there. I screamed at him and I robbed him and I ran away. I thought I got away with it. Uh, There's detectives that came out to my door and took me to the station. And they knew it was me because I had prior records, prior felonies I had been in jail before, they knew who I was. And, you know, at the time, at the time you could say it was like a burden, obviously for an active drug addict. But I could look at it now, and that was my biggest blessing in the world. Because when I got arrested that day, I lost everything. I lost my friends, I lost my family, I lost money, I lost my car, I lost trust, I lost a lot of values. I was in jail for nine months and I was supposed to go upstate for two to seven years. And that's where I got introduced in jail to the rooms of 12, 12 step fellowships. And I saw people in jail talking about the horrors of addiction, the things that I'm going through. And I didn't really believe in it. I was in jail, I was hopeless. I didn't want to hear that. And by uh, some miracle, instead of a uh, Going to jail, I was able to go to a facility in Port Jeff after nine months being in jail, and I lived there for four years. And 
It changed my whole life around. It's uh, Hope House Ministries in Port Jeff, run by Father Frank Pezzarelli. What that man did for me, and what he does for all the boys that go in the house, I can't explain, I can't even thank, thank him. Because he teach you, teaches you everything that you lost during addiction. How to become a human being again. You know, It's because of him that I started going to college again. He allowed me to go to college. He mentioned college to me. I was like, college? I was 21 at the time. I'm not going to college. And he made me go part-time. And during going to college, I was uh, very heavily and still, still am in the 12 step. 12 Step Fellowships. And I got to learn a lot about myself that I never knew. Like, with, I don't want to say any addict, but this addict, I'm like an onion with many layers. And I thought I was the, always the one that was being hurt when I was a little kid. But you know what? I was always a part of being hurt. Somehow, I put myself in the situation of being hurt. What that program that uh, Hope House did for me, one of the things they told me is how to avoid situations like that. It's all about trust. He trusts everybody in that house the same amount of trust. And you earn that trust with everything you do. And I guess I earned this trust, you know. I know, I mean, I know I am just trust. And what he did for me, I wouldn't be here today talking to you right now. I wouldn't be able to share my experience, strength, and hope with you. I wouldn't be in school. I wouldn't be writing a book. I wouldn't be doing this interview with you. I want a scholarship here. Oh, last year I wanted to um, get here from their scholarship. I applied for it and I had no ex expectations of it. I was just like, what, what the heck? I have decent grades, I'll go for it. And I get a call saying, Mr. Fuchs. I'm like, hello, who's this? And this is uh, Tom Law, the coordinator of uh, Get Here From Your Scholarship. I have good news. I'm like, what's the good news? We decided you're a finalist. I was like, I broke down in tears on the phone with him. You know, <laughs> that moment, I, I, everything that I went through in my life seemed like there's a reason. Like, like I, I used to play the pity card a lot. Like, what about me? You know, all this stuff happened to me. What about Charlie? And. I, I soon stopped doing that, and I decided just to do things and expect no outcomes. But two weeks later, uh, Tom Lowe calls me. I have great news. I'm like, what now? You won the scholarship. I was like, what? The, the feeling of accomplishment, the be one of the best feelings I've had in my life, if not the best. In order to keep what I have, I have to give it back. Ever see that movie, Pay Forward? Great movie. It's just like that. In order to keep what I have today, I have to give it out to somebody else. I uh, do assemblies for all the age, all the grades um, about the addiction. And I tell my story. The pain, the suffering that I personally went through, I don't want any other person to ever go through what I've been through. My goal is if I could just help save one life, I did my job. My only goal is to help somebody that was in my shoes. No person, no person deserves to be go through the ugly the ugliness of this disease. And I can say this like I said, I've been through it, and proudly, 
I overcame it one day at a time.